Capturing form data end-to-end -end can be a time-consuming and sometimes a rather primitive process. Let's use the example of capturing parental consent for a school field trip. The old way would be to probably email a template of the form to the parents, ask them to fill and sign it and send it back to you. It's practical, but rather dated. Now let's look at option two. You build a form onto your website that can capture all of this information from the parent and place it into a PDF, like this one. Have them sign it online and email yourself and them a copy of it. With Partnet's Form Builder, you can do exactly that. Hi again, this is Peter in partnership with Piatnet bringing you another Piatnet add-ons tutorial. And today I'll show you how to build a form on your website and use the PDF generator with Piatnet's Form Builder to capture user information and put it into a neat template to email back to the user. Now it's important to note that even though this tutorial covers the Form Builder functionality with Piatnet add-ons for Elementor, Piatnet also has a standalone WordPress plugin named Piatnet Forms and it is compatible with any page builder. Both of these have a free version that you can download from the WordPress repository, but to get the maximum power and to use most of the functionality described in this video, you'll need the pro version. I've built a very basic, very simple form using Bytenet's form builder. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail around all of the fields and the form that I've created. If you're interested in learning more about the form builder functionality and capabilities, take a look at some of our other videos on the channel. You can follow the link that's visible at the top right of this video right now. So I've got some form fields for the trip information. I've got some parent guardian details. I've got an emergency contact. I've got a consent. And right down at the bottom, I've got an area where the user can fill in a signature, give it a date stamp, and then submit the form, which will in turn generate the PDF that I need to get from these form capture fields. Now heading over to the back end, as you can see, I'm in the Elementor Builder page. I've built this form using some simple Elementor fields and also Piatnet fields and a submit button. So at the top, I have a title widget. I've got an additional title over there and I've created a number of different forms with the form ID and the field ID. As I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Check the other videos. So I've got a student name, student age, student class, destination, uh, de departure location, departure time, return, etc, etc. I've got a purpose. I've got a radio button selector here which will trigger some conditional logic. So depending on the selection of this field, the additional one will pop up. And then I've got the parent guardian details which is just the name, relationship, phone, email and the same for the emergency contact. Then I've got a acceptance field which will also pull through to the PDF later on and then the signature field and the sign date. Now last but not least and probably the most important part of this is the submit button. So under the submit button element I've put the same form ID as for all of the rest of the form fields which is the most important part and under the actions after submit I've gone ahead and I've added the PDF generator option which will allow me to, along with the other actions to submit, send an email or add the information to a mailing list. But important for this video is to create the PDF. Once I've selected the PDF generator option, I will now get an additional line item here for PDF generator and we'll go through all of the settings in this video. So first things first is the custom layout. And I'm gonna get back to that in just a moment, but I wanna show you out of the box stock standard what the easiest way is to set this up so next up we've got the pdf size so i have a few options there that i can select from in terms of the paper size this needs to output to i can specify a title and as you can see i've got a title there on the pdf i can align the text to left center or right and i can specify a font size that needs to be visible on the standard pdf next we've got a font family we don't have too many font options to select from, but since this is just a data capture, I'm not too concerned with which font I use. Next over, I've got a custom export file name. So if that is selected, I can specify the file name of the PDF that needs to generate on export. I've got a title color, any HTML content that I want to display in the form, and then I can specify an image background. Now I can leave this blank, and what this will do is just give me a white background PDF form that it'll generate and send it through. 
So if I put that back on, I've created a very simple A4 size image that I've used as an underlay or a background just to give the form that I export a nice additional touch. Next over, I've got the field mapping. And this is where I capture all of the information from each one of these fields to populate on the PDF. So I want to show the label. So here I can see just a basic example, a preview, if you will, of what this will look like. So it'll have a label, colon, and then the field value. Now by default, and in this way, because we haven't selected the custom layout, it's basically gonna plot out all the details, field by field, in the order in which they are captured in the form onto this PDF. So I wanna show the label, I can specify the font size, the text color, and also the text alignment. So once I've configured all of this, let's have a look at how all of this comes out in the PDF that gets generated. So back on the front end of my website, I'm quickly gonna go ahead and fill in this form so we can take a look at what the PDF looks like. I'll do that now. After I filled in the form, I'll hit submit. And there you go, the form is submitted. I head over to my mailbox and grab the PDF file that I've just emailed to myself. And this is it. It's got everything in that I filled in to the form on the website. I've got the title, I've got the file name, I've got all the form fields, the signature, the date signed, etc. But everything is a bit bundled up. Now don't get me wrong, this is perfect. It is functional, it is practical, but it's not exactly what I want. What I would like to achieve is this. So let's take a look at how I can even further customize the PDF generator to get me a form based on a template that I upload and fill the form fields in to the correct areas appropriately. Back over to the back end design site of my website. I'm gonna stay in the PDF generator section, but this time I'm going to enable the custom layout option. Now there are a couple of additional settings and you can already see what I've done. So I've got the custom layout activated and I want to import a template. And this is the template. So you can see it's exactly the same as the PDF file that I showed you earlier. Now in order to do so, I head over to my media library. I upload the empty PDF template that I have and I go into the file URL and I copy that to my clipboard and back over here, that's where I paste the PDF file URL. Now again, a couple of the same settings as I had before. So I still have the file size, make sure that the file size is obviously the same as the template size. I've got the font family, I've got the custom file name, the file name, the, the text detail, the content font size, which is this over here. Now I can adjust that to suit, so I can increase or decrease that value. I'm gonna leave that at 10. The content HTML doesn't change. Now in this regard, the image background doesn't really matter. If I wanted to have a custom image background, I would have gone so and put it into the template that I've uploaded. But at this point in time, I won't see the image background. Now, the most important part to this is really the field mapping area. And this is where I now go and add all of the individual fields that I have over here. And I map them independently to each of the open areas in my form. So I've already done this. It is quite a lengthy exercise but I'll show you some of the details around how that needs to be done and what is important. So first and foremost, if I look at the first field that I have, you can see that I've got the field short code, which is the student name. So if I just head back up to the student name and I select that field, this is the short code of the field ID that I've just gone ahead and pasted into that area. Now I need to do this a couple of times over and what I found rather useful is rather than recreating all of these fields one by one, I created the first and then I duplicated it by applying different settings then to each of the fields depending on its location. So here I've got the field shortcode, I've got the type which by default is the value that it captures but there are also other options and you'll see in just a moment where that gets applied to. So I've got an image upload, which gives me multiple images. I've got an image option or the default option, which is the text field. I can specify a custom font size. I can even auto position the text, but that's not exactly what I want because I want to be able to place them manually in very specific areas on this PDF form. I can set the font style, the text color, the width of the field. 
So let's take this one as an example. So over here, you can see if I stretch that width, it allows me to place the value that that field will populate in within the parameters of the space that I have available. Then I have my X and Y positioning. So if I move that, you can see I can move this left to right using the X positioning. And here I have the Y positioning to move it up and down on the form. And as I said, pretty much the same settings and I have to go and do it for every single field. So as you can see, I've got student name, age, class, trip date, etc., all the way down. Now, the one thing that is slightly different in this instance is down here. In the front end of the form, I want the user, if I go back to the front end, here I want the user to scribble his or her signature. And I want to be able to capture the image here and put it onto the form. So if I go back, the only exception is on the parent signature, instead of leaving that to a default type, I set that to a type of image. And same thing, I can specify font size if I want, but it's not really relevant here. Font text, font style, etc. no matter. But here I can specify the width of that field, the height that it needs to be, and also the X, Y positioning. Now let's go back to the front end, fill in that same form again with the custom layout option selected. And let's take a look at the difference in the output of the file. So back on the front end of my website, I'm quickly going to go ahead and fill in this form so we can take a look at what the PDF looks like. I'll do that now. After I filled in the form, I'll hit submit. And there you go, the form is submitted. Back over to my inbox and the PDF file that I've just received. And as you can see, I've now managed to take all of the form fields from my website and plot them into the required fields on my PDF. Going from this to that. Very, very easy. Now again, like I said, don't get me wrong. Both of these options are viable options. Depending on the requirement that you have, you can very easily build a PDF directly from an email form or a website form using Biotnet Form Builder and the PDF Generator extension. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful or helpful, remember to give us a thumbs up and if you really liked it, leave us a comment below. Bye for now.